Hello, RP here. Welcome to my channel. Today we're going to take a look at enchanting rooms again. This time around I've created a variable enchanting room with a couple of twists. First, this build doesn't require goo, which means that you don't have to search for slimes and can build this as soon as you've built an enchanting table. Also, this enchanting room has a lot more variability than my previous design, which you can see behind me. You can find the tutorial for that room in my Minecraft tutorials playlist. This build allows you to have up to nine different combinations. You heard that right, nine. I'll show you those combinations in just a moment. So let's get started. First, let's take a quick look around it. Fly up so you can feast your eyes on the complete build. You'll notice that there are a total of seven levers. Each lever is connected to a dedicated redstone wire, which connects to only one piston. The design is fairly compact, which is an important element in my designs. This design is a lot more resource friendly than my previous automated design, yet it has more variability. So let's get a good angle on the wiring so that you can pause the video or do a screen capture. Just move over here. And that should be perfect. Okay, the other side is a mirrored copy of this one, with the exception of the lever that connects to the wire that runs underneath. So we don't need to look over there. However, let's take a look at the wire underneath. Oops. single repeater that points at the back piston. And now let's take a look inside. As you see, sand blocks surround the enchanting table. These sand blocks are what control the enchanting levels. I'm using sand, but gravel could also be used. The idea is that we want a block that will fall when the regular piston is retracted. In this design, we aren't moving the bookcases as in my previous design. Instead, we are blocking them from being used by the enchanting table. By raising one of the side blocks, we block out two bookcases, and by raising a corner block, we block out six bookcases. We can therefore use combinations of blocks to achieve various level ranges per the signs outside. So let's take another look at those. For example, if we are interested in an enchantment in the range of 6 to 35, we would flip all the levers that have that range listed. So let's do just that and verify that it works. Okay, so all of the ones they have 6 to 35 listed have been activated. You can see the block configuration. So we have 9s and 21 and as we go through we should only see ranges between 6 and 35. I still really wish that there was a way that we could just plug in a particular value or even values to choose from. This is still kind of clunky, but this gives us a lot more control by using this sort of setup.
So as you can see, I've written the ranges on the signs to help me remember, but over time you should be able to memorize them yourself, or you can always do some quick math. And there you have it, a resource-friendly, highly variable enchanting room. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and if you would like to see more of these, please post a comment below with what you would like to see. Also, don't forget to subscribe so that you don't miss any of my future tutorials. Thank you for watching.